This weekend would have seen a number of you arrive here in the gardens to celebrate your 90th association anniversary. Sadly, the picnic in the park this year will be quiet and the grounds will be delighting in the solace that they've received as footprints have uh, lessened and we've been enjoying the grounds as they perhaps were once done by Holford. I've found this beautiful iris here in the gardens this afternoon and I just want to take a moment to reflect on your absence um, but to say thank you, to wish the association a very happy anniversary and to say you will be missed but plans are afoot to celebrate you all over again in a year's time. I hope this finds you and yours well. Uh, certainly the house is, as I say, enjoying this peaceful time, um, but there is no doubt about it. Western Burt House and grounds miss having children running around, making merry and generally causing chaos. Uh, the chaos reigns. It sits nicely on emails and in the world of Zoom, to which I know many of you have now become accustomed. So there are many things that we can take from this period um, of otherwise uh, a difficult time. I send the very, very warmest wishes from Western Burt on this slightly cooler day. And I wish you all a very safe and healthy year. And I look forward to seeing many of you back here in May to celebrate all over again your 90th anniversary, albeit plus a year. With best wishes. Bye bye. Hello, everyone. My name is Lee Ralphs and I'm president of the Western Bird Association. The association was established in 1930 as a way for old girls to keep in touch with one another. Remember that this was well before the days of the internet, email, WhatsApp, mobile phone or Zoom. They would communicate by letter and once a year send in their news to their section representative for publication in the association news magazine. This is a copy of the magazine from 1977, which is the year that I left Western Burt. And this is a copy from last year. The 2020 edition will be available to buy on Amazon next month. And it is always an entertaining read. And I would encourage you to get a copy. I would like to take this opportunity to acknowledge the amazing contribution of the section reps over all these years and to thank them and all of those on the executive committee all volunteers who are committed to working hard on your behalf to keep alumni in touch with one another and the school and at the same time endeavouring to ensure that the association remains as relevant in 2020 as it did 90 years ago. So on behalf of the association's executive I would like to say how very sorry I am that we're unable to celebrate our 90th anniversary as planned. But, as you all know, COVID-19 has temporarily put a stop to social gatherings and, of course, Western Burt is closed. However, I am delighted that the school have kindly rearranged the date for 2021. And I hope that you will put Saturday the 22nd of May in your diaries. I would also like to thank Mary Phillips, the Head of Art, for the beautiful picture she has painted, which has been turned into an e-card for us. Rhiannon Roche, Head of PR and Alumni Relations, for putting together this lovely email surprise, along with all those who have played a part in it. And of course, the head, Natasha Dangerfield, and her team for all the help and support that they give the association, especially during our 90th year. And I look forward to celebrating, a little belatedly perhaps, with many of you at Western Bird next spring.
Thank you so much for taking the time to have a little look at our video today. We've put this together just because you can't be with us and I hope that by seeing and spending a little bit of time walking around the school with some of our staff and students that you'll get some sense of what we can be like, albeit through the lens. This is the library. We use the library for Skills for Life lessons every Saturday morning where we learn about things like safe and effective use of the internet, public speaking, politics and healthy living. To our drama studio here at Western Burt, we have drama lessons every week and there is plenty of opportunity for extracurricular drama. One of the benefits of working at Western Burt or living and breathing the time that you're here as a boarder is the inspiring surroundings that we think really benefit the students. Hi guys, come on in. So this is the study centre and this is for all the sixth form pupils. This is the sixth form common room and what takes place in here is break and lots of the sixth form come in here in the evening to watch movies and just chill out with one another. There's a magic to the environment that we have here at Western Birds. This is the Italian garden. Sometimes we even get lessons out here. A new Year 7 hub was built this year. English and music classrooms are in there. Plus, we use the hub for Year 7 tutor time. Welcome to our science department. Science lessons are great because of the small class sizes, the enthusiastic teachers and the hands-on learning. While we're in a non-selective environment, all of our students work really hard towards their careers or further education opportunities. 90% of our students will move on to the university of their choice. This is where we eat lunch and there's always lots of choice with hot options, a salad bar and vegetarian dishes. But after we've eaten, we have lots of opportunities to play sports outside. My favourite thing is definitely the sense of community and family and that there's no division between your age group. We use the pool and the gym suite in the ledge centre every week. Plus, there's the option for early morning swim squad. The energy and dynamism of music at Western Mert is a force to behold. systems at Western Bert School and as a boarding environment with day students we can ensure that time is taken to seek and support the fulfilment of their potential. This is from the year nine dorms. So this is my sixth form room and everybody in sixth form day and four boarders get a study room and all of them have a desk so it's really nice when you just want to do independent study. As a boarding environment our pastoral care is really at the heart of all we do. My name is Eloise Stokes and I'm the current Study One representative of the association. I'm reading memories sent in from Elizabeth Shields of Section 15. Elizabeth remembers that Queen Mary visited the school in November 1944 and says, We spent the whole morning learning to curtsy and I was on the front steps to greet her. It was the afternoon, but she wanted to see the classes going on, not just sports, so I was quick to offer to be in my class as I was very bad at all compulsory sports, having little hand-eye coordination. Of the war years, Elizabeth remembers being evacuated to Bowood House and says, Bowood had a beautiful orangery terrace, but we had to do early morning exercises outdoors with no coats, only sweaters and mittens. We had chill blains in those days on our legs and hands. However, the considerable park grounds of Bowood were great to walk in. Because it was wartime, and no one knew if there would be gas attacks at this time, we carried gas masks. And there were drills, with different bells according to whether it was gas or something else. If the former, you had to grab your gas mask. If you forgot, you had to sit outside the staff room or the headmistress's room with it on. You can make terrible noises in those masks, which of course we did. My name is Isabel Wilson and I'm currently in Year 12 at Western Burt. I'm reading extracts from Memory Sent In by Claire Marshall of Section 34. Claire said, I was the last to join my form and had just four years at Western Burt. 
but the years of 14 to 18 are critical for developing the idea of self and one's role in society. And so it has proved. Claire cites self-reliance as important in her memories of what she gained from Weston Burt and says, any time a group of old girls gathers, we mention this strong trait. One which at the start of the 60s was not something expected of young women attending a top flight public school. Nevertheless, through Weston Burt's emphasis on character over marks, on deportment over prowess, and with the responsibility that came with seniority, we emerged readied for the significant changes of the 60s. So many of us in later years became first woman too, and rose to positions which redefined the norm. Tradition and rules also remain in Claire's memories. In particular, sick form caroling in the early morning before the Christmas holidays, singing Saviour again, flattening against the corridor walls on hearing stand, the cry that cleared the path for staff or prefects, strict table manners, memorising carols and vespers, which trip off the tongue half a century later, and ringing the church bell a hundred times in the dawn to announce communion. Claire also remembers that at the time of the Christine Keeler scandal, the newspapers in the reading room were found to have the relevant articles cut out and removed before they were available for pupils to read. The reading room was also totally crowded for girls to see the funeral of Sir Winston Churchill on television. My name is Hattie Nixon. I'm currently in year 12 at Weston Burr and the memory I'm reading was sent to us by Angela Potter in section 27. This is just a snippet of her memories. I have a fond memory of my school trunk. Not the trunk itself, but the pleasure of opening it. It would be very neatly packed and had the marvellous smell of new clothes and shoes. A new term, a new start. Our trunks needed to be large and many were inherited from relatives with stickers proclaiming the owner's travelling history. They were heavy too. They didn't accompany us on our journey to school though, especially as most of us came by train. They would arrive ahead of us, and the school workmen would have to carry them upstairs to await our arrival. There was no lift back then. The regulation clothes list included a cloak, a grey tweed skirt, a v-neck grey jumper with maroon stripes around the neck, pleated shorts, a flannel grey suit, the pink silk dress, which was called the pink sack, and a maroon felt hat. The list also included sheets and pillowcases, a travel rug, two table napkins, a dirty clothes bag, a shoes bag and 24 handkerchiefs. In one thing we did have some choice over however, it was the dress we wore in the evening. There were strict guidelines but they were allowed a degree of variation, particularly in colour. Following the post lunch rest in the dormitory, we had games after, which we could change into our dresses for tea, without having a shower. There were none, and the bath were rationed to one evening a week. When it came to hair washing, this was not allowed. We had to wait for the hairdressers from Tetbury to come and do it for us every two weeks. If you had a cold, then you had to wait another week because getting your head wet might give you pneumonia. My trunk fell apart quite soon after leaving school, as it was made mostly of plywood and had taken quite a battering on the trains. But I still have some hankies and one of my uh, table napkins with a laundry mark. The memory of the smell of that packed trunk is still with me though. Hello, if you don't know me, my name is Reverend Alice Monaghan and I'm the current school chaplain at Weston Burt School. Now, I would have much rather have you gathered in front of me in chapel today to celebrate 90 years of the association, but because of lockdown, because of the coronavirus, this recorded message is the best that we can do. So I'm going to lead us in some prayers for our world, for our school and for ourselves. We remember our Western Burt School motto from Romans chapter 12. 
do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We want to pray for our school during this time when most children are prevented from attending because of COVID-19. We pray for those children that they would continue to learn with their teachers giving lessons online. We pray that when our school is able to gather together again at Westonbert, it would thrive and would continue to overcome evil with good. We thank you for the good times and we also recall the not so good times. We remember the beautiful image that Jesus describes in John 15 of how he is the vine and God the Father is the gardener and we are the branches of the vine and must remain in Jesus to bear fruit. We acknowledge the pruning that you have done to help us bear fruit in our lives. And we take a moment to ask for God's forgiveness for anything that comes to mind. We take a moment to pray for anyone we know who is unwell at this time. And we end with the grace. Do join me if you know these words by saying them out loud wherever you are. And as we say them, we will think of our friends from our time at Western Bird. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you. Thank you.